religious beliefs have to be changed. And we will conquer Rome. and welcome to the Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. For Catholics who are fed up with the status quo in the church, but also a little confused about why the status quo exists, we need to understand one thing. There is a confluence of certain things creating an overarching dynamic, which is paralyzing the church in the fulfillment of her mission. Weak men as leaders, combined with a lack of supernatural faith, creates a machine within the church at the service of the diabolical. And to speak of this dynamic out loud is certain death for any man, ecclesiastical death. This topic is the third rail in the church. Touch it and you die. The term third rail refers specifically to train and subway lines that have a third rail carrying the high voltage charge that powers the electric engine. The term is used frequently in politics to refer to certain topics a candidate may never talk about lest he lose the election. Things like, say, reducing social security payments to senior citizens. Give a speech about that and his political career dies on the spot. The same holds true in church circles. Men must never talk about the lack of leadership, the lack of faith, the lack of masculinity among today's collection of bishops. You, me, any man who brings this up will be cut off, period. He will have gone there. He will have touched the third rail, and after that, the only discussion will be what songs will be best at his funeral mass. So good men, well-intentioned men, laymen within the church, need to stand up now and be counted. They need to start saying things like they are calling out various leaders by name, for example. And this is the problem. Too many well-intentioned men in the church are unwilling to risk the opprobrium that would absolutely come their way if they opened their mouths publicly. But this third rail, this topic, must be more than touched by any man who has a voice that is listened to. Radio announcers, TV personalities, college professors, authors, publishers, newspaper writers, apologists. Imagine if half a dozen big name guys all got together and then within a few days all published articles, produced broadcasts, posted blogs, etc., each saying what they all know to be true. They say these things in private, trust me, but they won't say them in public. The reason is because they are too afraid of the retaliation that would be leveled against them by the establishment. So they kind of sidestep the issue, hint at it a little bit maybe, but never really directly. They skirt around it in their classes, in their writings, in their broadcasts. And they have done that now for so long that it seems like second nature to them. They are lulled by the establishment into chirping on about joy and happiness, whereby they do not talk about the problems, but are encouraged to babble on about nice, ethereal stuff. And it's not that all the joy and happiness talk isn't centered in reality. Of course it is. The Catholic faith is a source of great joy, the source of the greatest joy. Problem is, all that happy talk isn't matched on the parish level. So a nice book is written, happy articles about the good and comforting aspects of the faith, which again are of course true. Speakers at establishment conferences talk about all kinds of nice things in the church and bad things in the culture, but it is verboten to breathe a word about the bad things in the church that produce crisis after crisis and scandal upon scandal. And as long as men who have a voice refuse to use it and speak the truth of all of this, nothing will change. Men sacrifice themselves, if necessary, for the sake of truth, and they must be willing to lose it all. If you aren't willing to lose it all for the sake of truth, then you aren't much of a man. In fact, it's a little hard to understand how you sleep at night, or get up and look at yourself in the mirror in the morning. Say the truth like a man, and deal with the consequences like a man. And there's nothing to be afraid of in the end, because the perfect man has your back. God love you. I'm Michael Boris.